Let me ask you guys a question. If the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what do you say when I say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Never be stingy to send salawat upon the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If the Prophet والسلام, lived in America, which city do you think he would live in? Which city? Philly? New York? LA? Nice weather? California? No? Say, Astaghfirullah, not New York. Okay. Okay, 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 let me ask you this. If the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam drove a car in 2018, what kind of car do you think he would drive? Huh? Corolla, Allahu Akbar. Corolla, Corolla is Sunnah, mashallah. Camry, Corolla. What do you think he would drive? Ferrari? Tesla? A motorbike? Why? Okay, okay, okay. If the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was with us right now in 2018, do you think he would have social media? Why do you say no and then you all have social media? That means you think social media is haram. So if you have it, why do you think he wouldn't have it? Let me tell you something, let me tell you something. The Prophet ﷺ, in his day and age, he was ahead of the times by the way. He utilized the mediums and the forms of communication that were available to him. He used these platforms to spread his da'wah. He used poetry, he used mail. These were all things that were not necessarily a part of the sunnah, but he utilized in his example, right? The problem is, when I ask you these questions, we cannot contextualize the sunnah in our day and age. For us, the sunnah is something that happened 1400 years ago, it's not something that's still happening today in our lives. How would the Prophet ﷺ live? What would his example be like? If the Prophet ﷺ owned a house in this day and age, what kind of home, sorry, never mind house, what kind of home do you think he would live in? Would he live in an apartment? Would he have a townhouse? A condo? Would he live in, would he live in the projects? Would he live in government housing? No? Would he have servants? Would he have butlers? Would he have... No? So I tell you this, I ask you these questions for you to start thinking about what it would be like. Because if the Prophet ﷺ was with us today, subhanAllah, how many, of us, how many of us would still even be believers? Maybe we'd be on the other side fighting against him. You never know. So we need to start contextualizing the life the Prophet ﷺ used to live in our day and age because the sunnah is for all times. The sunnah is from that time until the end of time. So I'm going to share this last poem with you. This is a new poem, it's not on YouTube, it's nowhere, but you know, you guys are like, you're my homies, so I'm going to share this with you, inshallah. Alright? This poem is called, Prophet Amongst Us. If you're not careful, the media will have you hating the people who are oppressed, and loving the people who are doing the oppressing. The fact that Islam gets so much press today is like a curse and a blessing. A blessing because nobody can say on the day of judgment that they didn't hear this message and a curse because we were the ones who were supposed to be delivering it to the masses. And here we are, trying to sell God to a world that is godless content with chasing the pursuit of happiness in arms instead, burying little baby girls in these shallow graves of Instagram fame, selling breasts and thighs like KFC, we have lost all shame. Today, you cannot even call immorality by name. The idols of yesterday have been replaced by the American idols of today, and we can comfortably say that tribalism and racism are here to stay. A black man is still considered less than a white man on any given day in every single way. We have lost our way, gone astray with so many freedoms, yet we are locked in a cage. For this dunya has no friends, 
only one night stands and we keep getting screwed, chasing mirages in the sand and there is no way out, no control, alt, delete, no disconnecting from this matrix. It is stuck on repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat. No more books of guidance, no more messengers to meet, no more wahi from the skies. Our connection is so weak and we've been given everything that we need to be convinced. But it's so hard to fight ignorance when Abu Jahl still exists because I'm tired of feeling different, tired of apologizing for what I didn't do, tired of trying to explain the truth to buffoons who just want to tie me in a noose. I'm tired of feeling tired, knowing that I could be doing so much more, but I'm a coward and a sinner and I don't even know if I deserve to even really have my last name. Trying to uphold the principles of a man whom the angels praised and sometimes I wonder if my prophet were alive today. Would this world we see today still be the exact same way? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah send him blessings and peace. Because if our Prophet had a passport, I wonder what would be his nationality. Would he be a Saudi? Would they call him a Wahhabi? Would he enjoy the luxuries of all these royal families? The man who used to sleep on a bed of palm leaves, would he live inside a mansion with servants at his feet? And I wonder, what would be his stance on foreign policy? Could he eat knowing how many children die from poverty and invading armies, dropping bombs discriminately, harming innocent moms, killing for fun, the man who taught us that this ummah was one? Would he educate and eradicate ignorance with his tongue or pick up a gun to anyone who said that God was not one? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But tell me, how could this be? The man who was sent as Rahmatan lil alameen and he couldn't even read, not Alif, Lam, or Meem, yet he would change the hearts of a generation. And everyone that would proceed taught us that every life was sacred and to have respect for humanity because we were all created from a single clot and seed. And I could see him at the UN addressing all the other nations, warning them of global warming and religious innovations. CNN would ask for an interview. His words would be short and sweet but they would still find ways to misinterpret and demonize him on TV. Oh, he must be crazy or suffering from some kind of insanity to think the rich shouldn't oppress the poor or take advantage of the weak. And what do you mean when you say that all men are the same except in piety? This is blasphemy. We've been living this way for so many centuries. They would charge Abu Bakr as an accomplice. Earth man would be entrapped, put Umar in solitary confinement and give Ali accessory after the fact. Khalid bin Walid would be labeled a menace to society and Bilal's face would be on the front of every Black Lives Matter tea. I pray for humanity because we are pray for humanity. In the past they killed prophets, took Yahya's head off with a sword, now they kill for prophets, justifying their unholy wars, spreading blood like gospel. Now more than ever before it feels like we need a prophet to guide us through the eye of this storm, but if we did, I would request on Facebook to be his friend or send him a DM on Instagram just to say, hey, I'm a big fan. You may not know me, but I've read all about you and you really helped me change my life. And I don't know how to thank you. And even though I never met you, I still believe in you. I'm a follower of you. And I follow you on Twitter too. <laughs> and when I grow up, I want to be just like you. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah reunite us all with you. Amin. Zakum Lawhair and thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.